and, and win that title. Uh, Bilal Mohammed was talking about how maybe him and yourself would be potentially could have been the ultimate uh, fighter coaches. How close was that coming to fruition? Who? Bilal Mohammed is like top five. Never heard of him, man. That's 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 interesting, dude. He's, he's never heard of. Him. I, I I don't I don't. But I don't know prelim fighters. You know prelim fighters. You know are prelim fighters. But that wasn't close to happening at all. Never got presented to me. Haven't even talked about him. You know, the thing is, is you guys are journalists. You guys need to go out there and do your jobs. Become real journalists. Do the work. Find out what's true and what's not true. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. This past April, that was one of the ones on his mind. I wanted to do a big July card, ABC, with you and Hamzad. Bilal Muhammad has also mentioned that he's been, that your name came up to him as well. So when you say that you've said yes to everybody, like, are those the two names that you were offered or were there? And Bilal Muhammad. Oh, let's talk about Bilal Muhammad, Mike. You're talking about the racists, right? You're not talking Bilal. You're talking the racist. That guy is so beyond racist. Like, everything he does is racist. The guy's a freaking joke. He's saying, I'm in this position because of my skin color, because I'm white? Mike, that's clear racism. I I, I announced that the UFC and ESPN need to cut him from the panel. They can't have a racist on their show. And you know who's hanging out and associated with that racist? John Anik. John Anik, you know, supports that racism. So it's a freaking joke. And John Anik's supposed to be impartial, Mike. He's supposed to be impartial. He's supposed to have that head site. He's supposed to be an interviewer and remain impartial. Don't be a cheerleader. You want to be a cheerleader. Let down the headset, pick up the pom-poms, go on the side, be a cheerleader. So you wanted to lick my freaking balls in London. Oh, Kobe, this, this, this. But then you want to go back behind the stage and cheerlead for a racist. So he associates with racism and Bilal Muhammad. Keep hearing is Bilal Muhammad. Now, Bilal claimed that he was offered a fight against you on London and you turned it down, but you're saying you've agreed to every fight. Was that something that actually came to fruition, you and Bilal? That's fake news, James. I don't, I don't even know who that is. We don't talk about prelim fighters. We talk about main event, main main attraction, pay-per-view, main event stars. You know, you, you until you're beating people in the top three consistently like I've done, all the world champions that I've beaten in this sport, continuous world champion after world champion after world champion, you know, like no one's earned their spot at the top of the world and the top of the mountain and the ladder than me. And, and I put in the work, you know, so I'm not going to pick some kid up who's at the very bottom of the prelims. You know, you got to earn your way up here. And, and that guy's racist, man. He was saying that the only reason this happened is because I'm white. Um, and just last thing on Bilal, he's, his case is that he's on this, you know, unbeaten streak, right? He had the no contest with Leon. He's beat Sean Brady his last fight. Um, do you think he has a case for a title shot or do you think they're right to give him, it looks like Shavkat next? You know, we're talking, we came here, James, today to talk about the big <laughs> fights, the big pay-per-view draws. I could care less about some kid that's still on the pay-per-view. Earn your way up. Beat a former champion. Beat a top three fighter. You've never done that. Every fight that I've had has been in like the top two or three the last like 10 years, like like six, seven years, legit plus. So, you know, I'm not going to worry about some little kid who's crawling, you know, trying to beg and crying from the fucking, you know, from the stream below, you know, to, I'm not going to give him a hand up. That's, that's not my responsibility. It's not my fault. You're not a star. You're a nobody and no one gives a fuck about you. James, you have to go out there. You have to make yourself likable. You have to win the big fights, the big fights, not against uh, rising little prospects, I'm talking the big fights against world champions, against contenders, against the big dogs of the fucking division. We're not talking about prelim fighters. Last thing on, on Bilal here. It looks like he's going to fight Shavkat. Do you think Shavkat beats him? Because uh, he's obviously coming off a nice one himself at UFC 285. Uh, you know, I, I don't know who any of these fighters are, James. I only know who the person that's in front of me, and that's Leon Leon Scott, you know, that's what Dana White said in the press conference. Doesn't matter what he does. Doesn't matter what happens between any other fighters, between Burns and George, between anybody else. It's me and Leon now. It's USA versus England. Now, Bilal Muhammad, who's a friend of mine, great, happens to be a great guy. Great guy. Uh, no, great. You're great. Bilal he's Muhammad. A, he, wait a minute. <laughs> I got I to gotta, I gotta check you real quick. Adam, this is too funny. A great guy is a guy that's a racist? Like, because you're he's talking not about a racist. Lyle. He's what? not. He's not a racist. He's not racist. So him tweeting to to me that saying the only reason Kobe's getting a title shot, he tweeted because he's white. That's not racism. He, hey, let's not get off Bill Lyle though. You're talking about the racist <laughs> Bill Lyle, Adam. Um, but no, racism. Not, that's clear racism. In this right. day and age, you cannot say you someone is deserving as someone by the color of their skin. It's not but about it, the color of my skin. It's my fucking body of work. You can right. fuck, you gotta be in the top of the division. Forever. He should not have I'm said that. I'm the fucking king of Miami. They earn someone off the basis of the color of their skin. If I said that, Adam, I, my career would be over. Do you know what they would do to me? They would hang me in the streets. 
There would be some you didn't accept the fight with Bilal at UFC 286 when you were able to weigh in and prepare to fight. I apologize, as a Colby. I, Jeez Louise, and, what are you doing? It's the first question people are asking. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. That's fake news. I was never offered Bill Lyle. You know, that I, didn't, I wasn't offered the racist. That guy's very racist. He said that I'm getting my title shot because I'm white. That's racism, clear racism. He should be kicked off the panel, ESPN. But let me tell you the truth. Never was offered Bill Lyle. The guy, he's beaten eight or seven guys on the on the regional circuit. When you start winning high-level fights, former world champion, top five, top five uh, ranked fights, then you can start talking about getting these big fights and title shots and this and that. But until you do that, stop saying my name, bro. That's all. So I accepted every fight that's been offered to me. Uh, Dustin Poirier, Kamzad Chamayev, Baba. I, there's no other fights that have been presented to me. If if someone says that they've presented a fight, show me a contract. Show me anything. Oh, he's showing text from his dietitian, Bill Lyle, let me tell you one piece of advice. <laughs> Get a new manager. Get a new manager, Bill Lyle. All right. Bilal! Remember the name Muhammad!